So these are recorded, especially this first portion here when we talk about the lesson. It's recorded and that'll be available for you if you wanna go back and look. Okay. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about artifacts. If I say that word to you guys, do you guys know what that might mean? Or does anybody wanna venture a definition of artifact? You just have to step over it. Yes, Maybe. we do. Oh, um, an artifact could be like something that's super old and valuable. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so an artifact, it can be actually a piece of artwork that's really old and valuable like you're talking about. Um, and then it can also be like a piece of pottery or something useful. Yeah, like the Mona Lisa. That painting is probably an artifact. Who knows? It, it's super old. An artifact tends to think more in terms of something that um, was used for something at some point. A lot of times like a, a old pot or um, an old sculpture or something like that. Um, and then for the Mona Lisa, when we look at really old paintings, um, that's something else that I wanna talk about too, because we've been talking about our own work and our own drawing and our own technique and getting better with, um, with drawing realistically. But I'd like to also talk about art in its context in history. Um, and one thing that's really cool about us being online for our classes is that a lot of the museums have um cool thank you a lot of the museums have um opened up their their um exhibits so that you can see things virtually now because a lot of us can't go to museums right now um so that's something that's a pretty cool opportunity that we have and i want to share that with you um we'll share screen a little bit and i'll show you some ways that you can look at some artifacts um online so i i i've I'm going to possibly fall through this a little bit, but let me get us all ready here and <laughs> make sure that I'm sharing the right thing. Okay, here we go. So there's a couple things I wanna show you. The first one, uh, the British Museum has kind of an interactive option where you can go, okay, so whoops, make sure I've got it here. All right, and then I'm gonna go to share my screen. Can you show me all of this stuff? Okay. Oh, because I do not hear. Okay. And I actually, whoops, there we go. Let me just make sure it's allowing me. Okay. Huh. Hang on. I actually haven't, I know you guys all are probably going to be better at this than I am, <laughs> but I actually haven't shared my screen before. Let me see if it's, there we go. Okay. I think I got it. <laughs> okay. Now share. Okay. So can you guys see that? Yeah. The thumbs up if you can see it. Yep, I can see it. Okay, cool. Okay, so let me just pull this up a little bit. There we go. So this is at the British Museum. Um, and the cool thing about this is that this is actually interactive. Uh, let me see if I can move my pictures. There we go. Okay. I love things that are interactive because sometimes you can click on a place and it'll actually take you there as like a little guy or whatever. Yeah. It's like zoomed in all the way and you can like click to move around the place and stuff. Exactly, Rio. That's what's super cool about it. So since we are online for a lot of the world is online in ways that it wasn't before, now we get to access some things in a different way that we weren't able to before. So this is one of them that I think is pretty cool. Um, so you can see all of these little dots are different artifacts and you can see the years on the side there, right? So we've got 1900, 1800, 1700, going all the way back. And then on the right over here, we can see some categories. So we have art and design, living and dying, power and identity, religion and belief, and trade and conflict, right? So we have all these categories over here. 
So if I go, there's a couple that I particularly liked that I wanted to show you. Um, let's see. So if I go over to living and dying, let's try that one here. I think this one was the one. There's some sound effects that come in too that are kind of cool. <laughs> um, so if you go over and you click on something, it'll show you a picture. I'm, gonna, I'm not sure if that'll be a little distracting, but the, um, the picture that you see is gonna give you a little thumbnail image of what the artifact is. And then if you wanna find out more about it, you can click on it and you get a little bit more information. You can also see it super close up and you can start to zoom and actually look at it closer. Whoops. Um, That's cool. Yeah, so you know what this is? Did you guys see what this is? It's a bird? It is. A but it's an artifact. So it's it's a coffin, it right? It is, yep. It's a coffin. How crazy is that? And then if you go back, let's see if I can. Uh, Wait, how is that a coffin? It's so if you look super close, see there's um I'm pointing like you can see my hand. <laughs> um under the wing, see how there's some hinges in there? Oh yeah. Right in there, there's some hinges. And then if you move over, you can kind of see there's an edge right there. I have one of Yeah, so you do nice. So this whole thing flips open. All right. So it's pretty interesting. And then if you go back, let me move my pictures here. Okay, so then if I go back to the information, uh, just one moment. Yes, Nyla. The fruit snacks? No, the Oh, yes, absolutely. One second, I'll get it for you. Um, okay, so over here, if you look back, you see that not only was it in a coffin, but then you can also read a little bit more about where it came from. This was from Ghana, um, and they put a lot of importance into their funeral, funeral celebration, so it would make sense that they would have a really intricate coffin like this. Um, so pretty interesting. And then if you want to kind of cruise around a little bit. If you go back in time, you can go further back. You can go all the way back. Let's see, where am I at right now? I'm over about 1500. And this is an ivory salt cellar. I'm also lining it up to my region where I wanna be. So all of these yellow dots here are in Africa. And then if we go over to the Americas, we can see the orange. We can go over to Asia in the green. You can come all the way over these um, different regions, and then each one, you can hover over, see if there's something you like. There's not that much in Europe. There's not. And you know, I actually was noticing that um, as well. And I'm not sure if that's just because the British Museum in particular doesn't have that many artifacts, because this is oh. actually kind of their inventory. Um, but that's something we could look into, to why that is. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Rio? Um, if you scroll, I think I'm not sure, but if on the Europe thing, if you scroll to the very, very back, I'm pretty sure I see a blue dot. And you're I'm, right. You're me right. Me too. There is blue like back. You're there. right. I want to see some of them. To see wow. I let's do it. Let's see. So this is a spoon from the Byzantine Empire. Let's see when this. Look at that. Let's go ahead and close up on it. Oh my like goodness. <laughs> dog on it it does look at that actually it looks more like a ram oh yeah it will i think look you're like right I think that you're is right. oh, you're not gonna say a ram or a sheep but far yeah, away uh, it looks like a dog dropping around look at that how cool and detailed that spoon is so with artifacts we're oftentimes looking at something it's a piece of artwork but it's actually um it's actually something useful I'm not quite. I have a little bit longer, okay? So you guys can play. Okay, okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click out of here. And then I'm gonna grab Mazzy her little abacus because she wants to use her abacus. <laughs> One moment, be right back. All right. Okay, so. 
So now we're way back here, right? 800, 700, 600. Let's go over. Let's try another in our European area. Looks like we got a lot of very intricate spoons back there. Another thing that I'm noticing <laughs> yeah? um, is that back, uh, when, when, when we're back here, the uh, Europe has actually a lot more stuff than all of the other ones. But, but when we're um, farther up, um, all of the other ones have a lot more than blue. Absolutely. That is a really- Maybe the thought. European artifacts are older then. Right, yeah, so and absolutely, and we, um, the, we, it was uh, our kind of civilization developed a lot earlier, right, in Europe? Yeah. And so we would have a lot more, and these are kind of like, I guess you would say maybe civilized tools to have these spoons and things that they would be using a little bit sooner. Um, that's a really, really good observation. And look, if, as we go back into it here, whoops, I'm clicking on the same thing. Um, let me get a couple more and just see what other types. So a lot, a we lot have of spoons. Kind of silverware, right? Yeah. So that also could um, say something about what kind of materials they had available too, right? So we've got a lot of silver back here, it looks like. Do you guys want to go way back and see what's back on those dots? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> way, 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 way. All right, let's keep cruising. Yes. Joys. Wow, there's a bowl. They have a lot of silverware. A lot of silver, yeah. Yeah, maybe silverware was like, oh, that looks cool. But maybe a long time ago, silverware was like stuff that was really valuable and stuff. Like nowadays, you could just go to the store and pick up some silverware. But maybe back then it was like super valuable. So that's why it's in the museum. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's true. And I think that was something that was, I, you know, just kind of seeing in just historical stories about uh, that being something that's commonly stolen, candlesticks and silverware, that kind of thing. So it held a lot of value. Um, now the purple or the whatever it is called, the magenta one, that has like none for miles. Totally. Yep. That's true. Uh, let's see, as we get back here, let me get a couple more and just see. So it looks like you can see the materials have changed a little bit, right? We got more bronze now. Now we're all the way back. We're over, where am I at right now? 100 BC. All right, so as we look back here, it looks like the materials have changed. Maybe not quite as sophisticated. Obviously it's older. That looks like cracked and furry and stuff. Right, right, absolutely. Let's see. So this it doesn't even look like a mirror. I wonder too. I imagine that they couldn't see themselves that well in their <laughs> in their mirrors. <laughs> Might have just been a rough reflection. But look how interesting. Still very intricate. I mean, this that's is, a mirror. That's what it's described as. <laughs> Maybe back then a mirror meant something else because that is not a mirror. I think, whoops, I lost my place. Or I maybe think, the uh, other side is a mirror. Right. I think probably the other side, whoops, I'm getting way far back. I think probably the other side would be the mirror, but I think also that um, I don't think it was a super high quality. <laughs> I don't think they could see themselves very well. <laughs> maybe like if you were trying to look into, you know, a piece of bronze um, that wasn't even varnished, you know, kind of, that was a little bit rough. That's about as good as they were getting. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead over and see what was going on in Asia around that time. Let's see. So we were right about here. So still bronze. This is a belt hook, it looks like. Let's see if there's anything. No, let's maybe go a little further back. Can we? Can we I want to see some stuff from Oceania. So let's come up a little bit sooner and see what we can see there. We see some stuff from America. Sure, yeah. So America in general is um, oftentimes going to be a little bit newer, but in terms of kind of more, more of our um, Western culture type of artifacts. But it looks like we've got this from 200 BC, which is pottery, native. Anything would be obviously na um, Native American back in those times, right? Until we get a little bit sooner in history. So it looks like 
we have our materials changing again, right? Specific to where we're at. Let's take a look at this one. What's a stone plummet? I actually am not sure. Let's take a look here. The modern term plummet signifies a weight used in a plumb line, but is not known what they were originally used for. Um, can we go and see some things from Oceana? Yes, absolutely. Let's do it. And remember, we can also, we are in the living and dying kind of category. And these are things that people would have been, been using for their life, for their daily life. And then also things they would be using for funeral celebrations and that kind of thing. Um, so would you guys would like to switch categories? Um, anybody Oceana. To, we'll, go, we'll go to Oceana, but would you like to be maybe in art and design or power and identity, uh, trade and conflict? Should we switch over to a different category here? And just see. Um, I want to see Oceana, and then we can go to trade and conflict. Okay. Because we can still go to Oceana, but we can be in another um, category. So maybe we don't have as much information about daily life from Oceana, but maybe we have more about trade or one of the other categories. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's stick with living and dying for Oceana on this one here. We'll look. Wait, why up. does it look like connect the dots? Like why are a <laughs> lot of them connected? Um, you know, Mourner's costume. Yeah. So interesting, right? Let's take a look and see what this is about. Let's find out more. Are they an ocean side community? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's oh see, look, God. this is a dramatic costume worn during a violent expression of grief when a Tahitian chief died. Wow. All right. So these are island populations, right? Polynesia. Um, and let's take a look at this costume. Uh, oh, wow. look at that. Look how intricate <laughs> Whoa, you guys want to wear one of these? Halloween's coming up. Anybody want to? Oh. oh, there's, look at that necklace. Wow. And I'm guessing this is a headdress type situation we got here on top. Maybe that, maybe the portion that has those two little uh, shells, looks like shells, would have been kind of resting on top. And then the, the higher portion Spiky. of the plume out would be a little bit higher. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it's really, I find that art is a really interesting tool to look back at history because even when we're making something useful, like a spoon, something like that, um, we were doing it in an artistic way. We're putting our, our soul into it. We're making it with our creative expression. We're decorating it a lot of times, especially um, if you look back in, in early Western civilization, it's really intricate, really cool um, decorative decorations that we're looking at very decorative whereas right now we create art you know paintings and sculptures that kind of thing but our daily tools our spoons our knives our forks maybe not so intricate <laughs> these days right a little bit more just efficient so we've, we've changed our ways a little bit on that and it's cool to look back and see how things have changed through history Did they make that out of paper bags you know what let's take a look i bet we can find out some more information on it um, let's see. So, rampaging through the district where the deceased had held authority. Um, so it looks like this is quite a ceremonial type thing. Um, and, whoa, when Captain James Cook's ship anchored at Tahiti for the first time in 1769, Joseph Banks took part in, part in one of these Heva to Papau ceremonies as an attendant. Um, I don't know if it says much about materials. Let's see. Uh, they were expensive to make. Each pearl shell could cost as much as a pig. The shimmering chest apron was made of tiny drilled rectangles of pearl shell. A small hole in one of the shells of the face mask allowed the wearer to see, and some of the coconut shell pendants attached to the back cloth apron have notched motifs and a design that refers to ancestral genealogies. So I'm not sure. I don't think I have access to what that material was made out of, but a little bit more about the other, the other material. The other material. <laughs> All right, you guys hanging tough with this? You want to look at a couple more things? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Bye. 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 Stick with Oceana here. Uh, canoe. Whoa. I don't know how you ride in that canoe. <laughs> it gets a little tippy. <laughs> it looks um, tiny. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's the kind of canoe where you have your legs coming off the side. <laughs> or maybe um, it's the kind of canoe that you put fruit in. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it was more. Oh, look, some canoes could carry up to eight people with spears and dogs. Wow. <laughs> yes, my love. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, River. <laughs> um, Maybe they but, just took it from far away so they could fit it in the picture. That's true. Yeah. Maybe this is huge. Okay. I wonder if it gives us the, the um, dimensions here. Or the scale. Maybe it's not to scale. Yeah. Hmm. It's made out of the bark of a tea tree. You guys maybe use tea tree oil? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's made out of the bark of the melaleuca tree and paper bark. Wow. Um, let's see, I don't see anything about how large it is. It's used for voyaging offshore to catch seals or to collect swan and duck eggs. Super interesting. Let's see. Let's see if we can find any more Oceania. Or Ocean. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, actually. Um, ooh. Meat eating house lintel. What's going on there? Um, oh my god, look at the thing on the front. It's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I should be used to that after seeing those for like five years. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> um, let's see. So this they'll freak me out. The ancestor spine. The rafters are the ribs, and so on. Hmm. It's made out of bones. <laughs> I don't know. Oh if my god! Them or if it actually is. Let's see. Um. So it's the. Flow, flow of sacred ancestral power and still is a fundamental force with the Maori communities. And this flow has been made tangible in the carvings. I think it's a representation of that. Um, so it wasn't made of bones? I don't think it's made of bones. It's just meant to represent the spine and the ribs. And that's, that's still awesome. really, really freaky. Who would want yeah, to do I would that? Agree. I would agree. <laughs> it's like really freaky. <laughs> Let's see, glittering shell inlay. Yeah, I'm not totally clear on exactly. I think it's mostly just a, a ornament, you know, just kind of like the sacred ornament that's supposed to represent those things. Uh, let's see, let's see what else we got here. Let's come up a little bit, we're getting a little bit sooner. More recent, let's try this one, whoops. A dance mask, ooh. Uh that looks uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I'm not totally sure how that really fits on. Um, that looks <laughs> more like a I know how. long how, nose. How, okay. how would you say that fits on? How the heck? I would say head? you put your head in the big back part and then you yeah, can yeah, see through the you nose. Put your head in the big back part because. Okay. Like and then you can see oh, through the nose. Interesting, you guys. Let's see. Do you want to see a little bit about how, what kind of material no. this one has? <laughs> no, 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 thanks. No, thanks. I'm good. Thank you. Well, the yeah. teeth on it look oh, sharp. Gosh. Like yeah, zoom in on the teeth. I'm, you want to zoom in on it for a second? Let's just take On the look. teeth. Whoa. It looks like it's made of metal or something, actually. That would looks be like there's rust on the teeth. <laughs> It's in pretty good condition, though, I must say. All the feathers and I don't know if it's all feathers, some fur, or what, but you want to look a little bit at the materials? No. <laughs> Please, no. Yes, yes, yes. No. Yes, no. Yes. No, not bones. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. no. 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 No.
Let's see. What do we have? Is it surmounted? What? Yes. Okay. Oh. I don't see much of, okay, so it's metal, shell, and feathers. Don't worry, it's nothing too crazy. Um, mask we got a turtle shell, elaborate decoration using wood, metal, shell, and feathers. So nothing too crazy, don't worry. <laughs> I still don't like it. <laughs> I still oh. freaky. It's, yeah, it that I The will. rust on the teeth makes it look like there's blood on the teeth. It's the rust, yeah. The rust adds a little extra nice touch to that. Let's look a little bit. No, not nice. Art and design here. It looks and let's awesome. See. So art and design. So some of this is going to overlap, right? Some of this is going to be in both categories. Um, let's see. Do you want to stay with, with the Polynesian area a little bit more? Yes. Okay. Ooh, there's a shield. Ooh. That looks really fancy for a shield. Right? So again, we've kind of these useful. Oh my god, there's a head on it. Go oh. up. Look ahead. You're right. <laughs> You're right. How do you even hold that? It looks heavy. No, it looks pretty heavy. It doesn't look super efficient, right? <laughs> but it looks it? beautiful. What is it? What is it? Arrows can definitely not go through stones, so I mean, I get where they're going there. Yeah, it seems like it would definitely. Is that a shield or something? Well, yes, that is a shield. It's a shield, yeah. This is a shield. Let's read a little bit more about it here. Um, okay. It looks so. like a surfboard. Let me guess. The red represents blood. The heavy mass of, so it's wood, actually. What? It says the heavy mass of wood. So that's, okay, what? that makes sense, right? So we were looking no, at it, we had the face at the top, and then we saw just... that it was all um, made out of wood coming down, right? Or it looked like it was more like a, some kind of a metal or, I mean, I'm sorry, a stone, but it's actually made out of wood. And it also is connected to um, your ancestor that would be connected to the shield. So that's why I would have the face on it. So they're thinking that you're gonna be protected not only by the wood, but also by the ancestor that's connected to it. So that that's kind of freaky, actually. It's interesting. That's kind of, well, that's it just gives you the, the I hate little... it. I hate it. Don't that's worry. Really we'll cool shift gears. I hate it. We'll shift gears. That's a really cool yeah. story. So you guys, that's I really know, gross. for some of us, this is going to be super interesting to keep going through these. So I'm going to keep going through it. If you want to draw anything that you've seen, um, or if you want to put the British, it's British Museum is who I'm looking at right now, who's giving us this interactive um, uh, program here. So if you want to keep going with me, you can. If you would like to explore this on your own, that's okay with me too. Um, and you can also, I find it very interesting to choose something I'm really drawn to, choose something that I really like, and start to uh, sketch it. Start to sketch it. Just kind of connects you to it a little bit more. Okay, so those are your options. You can stay with me here. We're gonna keep on looking through. If you'd like some free time to navigate this on your own and either continue to look at the different images or to choose one and start to sketch it for yourself, you can do that too. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep on cruising through here for, for you guys who wanna stick with me. All right, so let's see this. So very cool. I think that's a pretty cool story that um, the way that those shields would work. Wait. The play the audio. You should play the audio. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try the let's audio. Let's take bets on. on what it says. <laughs> do you guys think it's just going to read the um, the information here? Or do you think there's something? It's probably the most reasonable, though I was going to say it was going to film somebody like <laughs> screaming or something. <laughs> <laughs> something a play of what? This from is from war. I mean, like, that's it's a war that's shield, that's so I mean. It was the type of shield frequently used since at least the 1900s in tribal feuds and raids on neighboring settlements. Here it's boring. Is the curator at the <laughs> British Museum. Oh. This shield comes from the Asmat area of West Papua. It so probably not too much more interesting than reading it, but it's still a nice option. Uh, just one moment. Yes. That was boring. I thought it was going to have like battle cries in it. I tell him done, you know how it goes. Just one moment. Uh, let's see. So, hang on one moment, you guys. Let me go ahead. Let's choose a different one here. Let's see what we got. So we're in trade and conflict. So all this is probably going to be, whoa, hooked boomerang. 
Aborigine <laughs> Australia. All right, just one moment. I'm going to play the audio on this for just a moment. And I'm going to grab a little snack from that. This is an Aboriginal hooked boomerang from North Central Australia. Here's Gay Goldthorpe, curator of the Oceania Party. department. Right across Australia, boomerangs come in many shapes and forms. There are cross boomerangs, returning boomerangs, hunting boomerangs. This boomerang is commonly referred to as a number seven boomerang today just because of its shape. And it was used by men in North Central Australia to aid in catching birds and perhaps other small creatures. So sometimes when the boomerang was thrown above a waterhole, the birds would rise and they could catch them in a net or perhaps the boomerang might hit them. This That's is kind of sad. Boomerang. <laughs> All right, we'll learn something new every day, huh? Cool. <laughs> All right, so now we're looking at Aboriginal Australia. So we get a little taste of, um, or a little peek into a completely different region. Very interesting. I like seeing Oceana's horrifically scary costumes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go. Well, we're in trade and conflict now. Let's see what we've got over here. Uh, not the shield again. Um, Splashboard. Splashboard. Ooh. Let's take a look what at that one. Flip is that. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks very fancy for a canoe. Yeah, um, they travel in large dugout canoes and outdiggers, which can sail in either direction. Um, and the splashboard was obtained. Huh, the carvers of these maybe, were special. Maybe it was mounted to the front like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. It could have been mounted like that. Let's see if it tells us. Um... So I have a question. Yes. Um, usually if um, you're like out exploring and you find an artifact or something, you can't touch it or whatever. But, well, sometimes you're not allowed to touch it. So how would museums be able to bring it into their museum if they're not allowed to touch it? That is a really, really <laughs> great question. Um, and there are, whoops, we got somebody coming in. There are um, specialists who are trained to handle these things in a very, very delicate way. They also can restore things and clean things in a very delicate way. Let's talk a little bit about that. We're going to go over, um, we're going to use a different site and we're going to go over some more of this stuff tomorrow. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that and what that means and who those people are, their role. But it's, um, it's kind of, if you see it, you don't want to just grab it because you could harm it. But somebody who's trained to handle different types of materials and different ages would be able to handle it, hopefully in a way that it's not um, broken or damaged in any way. But it's a very, very specific uh, job. So if we see something like this, it's usually best to maybe leave it um, in case you're just walking around and you see an ancient splashboard. <laughs> it's usually best to leave it. In wow, <laughs> that's so likely. That's <laughs> so likely. I totally believe I'll see oh, that. You never know. <laughs> Fine, you know, um, for do now. But it's it's a really important job, and there's there's definitely a lot that goes into it. We'll talk a little bit about it on next class because I wanted to bring that up anyway. So thank you for that question. Um, let's see. So I don't. I mean, I think I think you might be right, Fiona, in terms of how this was used. Um, because yeah, it's definitely not gonna be. It's. I can't think of another way that it would actually be positioned along most of its paint, white lime, red and black highlights. And skilled carver, definitely. Look at that carving. Let's get a little bit closer on it. Definitely a skilled carver. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's a little person up there. <laughs> it looks Gonna like- Gonna get a lot of splashes. <laughs> it looks like one of those people who are trying to get a photo of the, um, you know, those people who they go to like, whatever it's called, the Leaning Tower of Peace or whatever it's called, and they try to like put their hands on it to look like they're holding oh, right. <laughs> that. Yeah. That makes it look like he's trying to hold that up above his head. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> 
Um, okay. Like, Who's singing? I'm not sure. My younger sister, Emerson. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, so my no. daughter singing too so we have a whole background <laughs> hey sid want to come in here and sing <laughs> <sighs> all right let's see so let's go let's do a little bit more here and then maybe we'll go whoa shark tooth sword <gasps> wow no, let's see it. Cool. oh my Sorry. goodness look at this you guys it's actually individual shark teeth Oh, wow. That's cool. Wow. Uh, oh, my God. I'm going to have nightmares now. Yeah, I don't, don't want to be saying that. that sort of thing. Yeah, I, would, I, I wouldn't want to be in a war, in a fight wow. with somebody with that sword. Right? Yeah, that looks scary. Yeah, it does. That's so, cool. That must take, yeah, that's cool. That take a really long time. That must take a really long time. So, um, let's see. These were once uh, fighters used formidable weapons edged with sharp teeth, drilled and bound to the edges of palm wood staves. So yeah, those what are, are staves. I don't know, actually. I would guess it's just kind of the palm wood, um, kind of like the spiky part. Like here, let me just look it up so I'm not telling you something that's not true. <laughs> um, let's see. Lots of ouch too, really? Right? Yeah, a lot. Sure. Imagine trying to build that and like put on each individual shark yeah. to try not to get stabbed by one or something. Oh my god. Yeah. And they didn't have any machines to do it. I know, and they're trying to put it on and it pokes them. Um, okay. A lot of cuts on your fingers. <laughs> yeah. So a stave is a vertical wooden post oh, okay. or plank in a building or other structure. So never mind. It's just in general, a vertical wooden post or plank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a place to store something? your weapon. Can I say something? Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I saw once in a museum, well, well, I watched this show or whatever that has the person who made Kermit the Frog in it. Kermit? Oh, I thought it was Hermit. No, Kermit. <laughs> but anyways, what happened was he said that it, it's kind of cool because he says like how he made it and stuff. And he says that used to be like some really cheap, just green jacket like you would buy at the store. <laughs> and now it's in some, like the original puppet is now in like a museum for like $20 million. Yep. Seriously, the context means everything, right? If you're a, if you have a painting, and it's an iffy painting, but you're a famous artist, and it's from a long time ago, then yep, context means everything. Um, let's see. So let's let's go do a couple more, and then maybe we'll try a different category. Can here. we see some more in Africa? Yeah, sure. Let's do. Let's stick with trade and conflict for our category, and we'll go over to Africa. Well, that's cool. So there's a lot of Portuguese influence um, in Africa, just from people coming Ooh, over. I should have my, my grandma take photos of some of her African statues. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I, would I love wonder that. how big that is, if that that's just so like cool. a size of like a toy or if that's like a big statue. Um, let's see if we have, looks like I don't see any dimensions on it. Um, <gasps> Let's see, the dress of a European soldier, a Portuguese mus a musketeer, um, dates to the late 17th century. Yeah, I don't see anything about how big it is. I'm not sure. It kind of looks like it might not be that big. Yeah. But, but I'm not sure. Let's see. What is he holding? Is that a gun or like a telescope? I think he's holding some kind of musket type thing, yeah. <laughs> I, I, Maybe I, I a makeshift but I don't think weapon. So. <laughs> Military armorist. <laughs> what if he's holding the shark tooth sword? <laughs> oh my god. Imagine. Probably like, not. Since they're on different sides of the world. 
Like, imagine if you're in the army fighting and you see someone with a shark tooth sword and you're like, you know what, I quit my job, peace. <laughs> Surrender! <laughs> last against that. That's Surrender! Cool. I'll you go to what, jail, guys, I just I'm don't want to be hurt. This was a last minute thing, but bye. Sarah. Miss Veronica? Yeah? Um, can we end a little bit early? Because I'm super hungry. Sure, yeah. You know what? So we've got about 10 minutes left, and I know that we are right before lunch. So I'm going to keep going a little longer. If you want to stick with me, you can. If you're ready to go, that's okay. Um, feel free to poke around this, though, if you want to, because it's really fun to play with if there's stuff that you're interested in, okay? But that's okay if you want to go. That's okay. All right? Thank you. Um, and then Fiona, you have your hand up? Oh, she was going. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, can you go back to the guy with the thingy, with the thing in his hand? I want to see what he's holding. Yeah, let's go back to it. I think he was right here. Okay, and let me zoom in. Let's get a little closer. All right, so it looks like that's a gun. Yep. Yeah, that's a gun. Yep. Now that we got closer, I just noticed he had swords in his pocket. Exactly. I actually oh, yeah. just looking at that too. I noticed that he has huge eyes, but a small nose, and huge lips. And yeah. <laughs> the gun, that. The gun also looks broken. What does? The gun also looks broken. Yeah, it yeah. might have been a little longer originally. It looks like the edge of it might be broken off. Yeah, here. maybe since it was so old. They probably made of, might have, like, found it somewhere, and it was just, like, in the dirt or whatever, so it was starting to, like, break apart stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, it definitely looks like it might have um, lost a little bit on the edge there, which definitely tends to happen, right? Whoops. When we're looking at this stuff, some of it's still there, some of it's kind of falling apart. But this is pretty well-maintained. All the detail in there. Oh, he has a crack on looks, Now that we're zooming in, it actually looks pretty big. Yeah, it might be. I'm surprised it doesn't have dimensions, actually. We might, we might have to poke around a little bit more and see if that's listed somewhere else. But yeah, pretty intricate here. He's definitely, whoops, got plenty of um, weapons. And armor. And armor, yep. And he's very awake <laughs> looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's ready to go. All he looks right. He's very shocked. Yes, he does. <laughs> it looks like he just got shot by a bullet and he's like, uh. But his armor saved him, so he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, you're dead now, mister. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, well, a kill cool. of pot shred. Yeah, so it looks like these, um, it's shards, which I'm thinking that many's like shards. I'm not positive. Let's see. So this is just, as we get older, um, in our, as we're going further back in history, it's going to be harder to find things that are totally together, right? So we start looking a little bit more at pieces sometimes. How so would they know that that's cool. super old if it's just shards, like an old plate or something? That's a really good question, too. So that's kind of in keeping with, um, you know, the specialists that, that do for their whole entire job is to preserve these types of things and learn how to date them. Um, there's different methods, and we can touch on that, too. We'll touch on that next class so I can study up a little bit, too, and make sure that I'm giving you the right information. But there's different methods they can use to test, to test the samples and to figure out a ballpark. They usually can't tell exactly, but they can figure out a ballpark of how old um, that things are. So let's see, these are broken pots that were picked up on a beach in Tanzania in East Africa. And they were actually made as far away as China or the Middle East. So that's really interesting because we start to look at how people were trading. Because if these are actually from China or the Middle East, but they were found in Africa, we can start to think about how people were trading and starting to um, interact with each other. So there's just so much that we can, can learn and investigate through art and through artifacts. My my dog just heard our garage door open because my dad just got home and he just started galloping like a horse toward the garage. Aw, dogs are the best, <laughs> I think. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's do one more. We'll do one more. We're going to work on this tomorrow, too. We're going to do this. We'll also, I'll take you to a different site tomorrow also. Um, but let's look at one more. Where any Anybody want to throw out? A region that you want to go to for our last one?
Let's see. Let's take a look. Look, we haven't really been to Asia much. Let's just pick one here. Let's we do... haven't, we haven't gone to Oceania, have we? We have. We were looking at some stuff there, the shield and the canoe. Um, that stuff was from over there. Um, and then and then that um that costume too was from over there too. So Imperial China. So you can see we are looking very stylistically, very different, huh? Um so this is just a flask, I would guess holds. You can see kind of probably some kind of opening here at the top. Yeah, pretty well preserved. And look how beautiful. Now we're looking more at kind of painting onto the, onto the artifact. So I think let's go ahead. We got about five minutes. I think let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm gonna stop the recording and um, I'm gonna take us out of here and I'm gonna leave you also the um, website. There we go. Okay. And then let's stop.